Hello, my name is Daniel D. Blinka. I teach evidence and litigation related courses at Marquette University Law School. Today, I want to speak briefly about the dramatic change in Wisconsin law governing expert opinion testimony. The key word there is dramatic. The changes are not traumatic in any sense, but they are far reaching and they are important. The new evidence law came out of the January 2011 tort reform package. Specifically, the legislature adopted the Daubert reliability standard found in the federal rules of evidence and now in nearly 40 states. The new standard is effective in Wisconsin for all actions filed on and after February 1st, 2011, civil and criminal. The changes are complex and technical, and for that reason I wrote a primer to assist the bench and bar that will appear in the March 2011 issue of the Wisconsin Lawyer. A link to that primer will be provided on the Wisconsin Bar website. I hope that you're going to find it useful. The public policy behind the new rules are certainly debatable, but I want to use this brief opportunity to make several observations about how the law likely affects trial practice in Wisconsin. The initial question is, what exactly has changed? For decades, Wisconsin applied the relevancy test to expert testimony. It had three elements. Is the expert opinion relevant? Is the witness qualified to present it? And will that opinion assist the trier of fact? The reliability of the expert's methodology was left to the weight of the evidence and for the jury to determine. As long as the judge found that the evidence was reliable enough to be probative, it was admissible. Under the new rules, uh, we do retain the core of the old standard. The expert's opinion must still be relevant, the witness must be qualified, and the opinion must assist the trier of fact. But, and that is a huge but, reliability is no longer left to the weight of the evidence. Rather, the trial judge is now the designated gatekeeper who must find, first of all, that the expert's opinions rest upon a reliable methodology and a set of reliable principles. Secondly, that the expert reliably applied that reliable methodology. And third, that the expert opinion rests on sufficient facts and data. Only then is the evidence given to the jury to assess its weight. In closing, I would like to make four points. First, obviously, lawyers must be attuned to the new foundation when consulting with experts. The new standard must be explained to those experts so that you can anticipate objections and provide a proper evidentiary foundation. Second, under the new rules, the world of testimony is rigidly divided into the realms of lay and expert evidence. In other words, all testimony is either lay testimony or expert testimony. There is no in-between. And that is very important because anything found to be expert testimony must be based upon a reliable body of specialized knowledge, the Daubert standard. Finally, this reliability test applies to all expert testimony, not just science or medicine. In the federal cases, we've seen the courts struggle with experience-based experts. For example, police officers in gang or drug-related cases, or police officers who do accident investigation. The problem is, is this lay or is this expert testimony? Third point. The new rules will likely trigger frequent objections to expert testimony as improperly ipsedixit. Uh, for those of you whose Latin is a little rusty, ipsedixit means, quote, because I say so, unquote, or put differently, trust me, I know what I'm doing. Ipsedixit objections frequently appear in the federal case law, especially the Seventh Circuit. In offering expert opinion testimony, a witness must be able to articulate and to explain his or her methodology and principles. The lesson, a witness can't rely on intuition. Qualifications are simply not enough. The problem, however, is how much articulation is sufficient, and that's where we see a lot of debate in at least the federal cases. My fourth and final point, the truly perplexing question is how Wisconsin law will develop over the next several years. My take, Daubert is a process, not a rigid formula. The trial court is invested with great discretion, as I explain in the Wisconsin Lawyer article. Early on, I think we can anticipate that Wisconsin will look to federal precedent and state precedent from other states having similar rules. However, 
while this precedent may be useful, it is not binding on Wisconsin courts. The fundamentals of federalism means that we are free to develop state law as the Wisconsin Supreme Court deems appropriate. This is important because other states manifest a strict or a lax approach to certain kinds of expert evidence. This is why I said at the start, these changes, these new laws are likely dramatic, but not necessarily traumatic. Personally, I think it is unlikely that the new rule will result in significantly more expert opinion being excluded than under the old standard. What is certain, though, is that the foundation will change and we must adjust. Thank you very much for this opportunity.